So it's time for something a little bit more challenging. In the first video, we looked at UV mapping a box. And the handy thing about a box is that in a lot of cases, you can cut them up and turn them into a flat map, which is ideal for the purposes of uh, UV mapping in the way that I'm doing it here. However, some things uh, are still boxes, like this radio, for example, but you might not want to cut them up to, uh, to turn them into a flat map. So you need to take a slightly different strategy. And in this case, what I've done is I've taken photographs from all different directions and then used a paint package, in this case PaintShop Pro, to combine all those images onto one image, uh, making the most use of the space available. And you'll notice that the things are different scales, like this back, which is the same size on the object as the front, uh, is smaller. And I'm reasoning because I'm not going to render the back of this radio. If the back's seen, it'll be in a reflection somewhere and so it doesn't need to be so high resolution. The other thing to note about this image is that it's not just a box because it's got rounded edges which is something we'll have to deal with and uh, there's a, as a dial on the side here and an antenna but I'm not going to include those because they don't really have any uh, texture information uh, that the image can capture other than the fact they're black and shiny in this case or, or just shiny in that case so I might as well model those separately and just create a material to suit. So I don't want to make things too complicated for myself essentially because it's going to be complicated enough it is, as it is. So in Wings now I've got this image set up and ready. What I'm going to do is create my model and as before I'm starting with a cube and I'm going to just oh, I can enter the values here because I use the option there. I, I didn't notice that before. So if I go to cube and go to the options I can enter the X, Y and Z which I have already recorded. So X is 18, so it's 18 centimeters long. Y is 9.4, so it's 9.4 high, and Z is 2.6. So that is roughly the shape of my object. Now, I need to tackle these corners because they're rounded. So if I select one of the edges here, press G, and I'm going to bevel it down somewhat. I'm just going to have to guess for this, I think. So somewhere like that. Then I'll select this edge again, use G and bevel and just I'm rounding this off now you see and then press G again so it selects all the edges and then bevel again so the question is is that about right for my subject so I'll have a look on here mm, the radius looks a bit tighter so I've made a mistake there I can do control Z and control Z control and alt and Z to keep, take me back a few steps and this time I'll not bevel it down quite as much and then see if I can get a tighter curve just by uh, following the same process as I did before and then just try and visually check that I'm about, I'm about right so that looks that looks better uh, I'm going to select the front and the back select the edge and then I'm just going to bevel that edge down slightly as well because that will improve the appearance of the object when it's rendered so that is my shape that I'm going to UV map now but I'm going to take a slightly different strategy so I've got my uh, UV map image, so I'm going to import the image here under File, select my image and go OK. And there I've got my image in now, ready to be used. And so I'm going to select this front face, press plus to extend the selection to include that beveled edge, right click, select UV mapping, and then you can see only the front face now is included in this uh, segmenting auto UV segmenting section. I right click continue and instead of unfolding use projection normal and that gives me that. So at this point I can create the texture. So right click create texture 2024 by 2024 suits me. Draw edges uh, no and background options I select the image that I've loaded in just now get OK and OK and that's generated my image texture here and now I need to fit this which is the front face over the front face there so I can just drag it and move it into position now if I can get the middle more or less in the middle of the face and then I can use the scaling options here so I'll scale it horizontally to bring it in and then I need to try and get it in the middle again and then I'll scale it uniform till the top and the bottom are more or less aligned okay and then I'll see whether the curves are any good now and scale horizontal and trying to get it so it doesn't overlap the edge but just sort of fits so I'll scale vertical again and then move it down see I've got carpet at the background so that'll show up on the edge if I 
if it overlaps the edge. So it's not a bad fit. So I'll just do the cross on them. Let's see. Press space to deselect everything. So I can see there that the carpet's just slightly showing. So if I just make it a little bit smaller, it won't show on that beveled edge. So if I select the front there, select my entire object, and then go left click on UV mapping, it'll open that window anyway. And then I just scale it down slightly uniformly so it's not overlapping the edge and picking up a bit of carpet. So that is the front of my radio. The next step will be to decide which is the next face I'm going to do. I'll do the back because that's going to be similar. So select the back face, press plus to extend the selection, right click, and then left click on UV mapping. You can see it's brought it into that window ready for me. Right click again, um, right click continue, then select projection normal. Now scale uniform so that it's small enough to fit on the back of the radio here and then I'll just scale vertical so scale vertical so it's, in a, it's the same proportion and then scale uniform, you can see it's a bit fiddly but uh, it's easy enough because most of these things I've managed to align fairly square and there's a little bit of leeway so scale uh, vertical again and fit it in, move it around so it fits so you can use A to centre that and then zoom in uh, looks like it needs to be scaled a vertical a little bit more, just slightly, and then move it into position. All right. If it doesn't overlap the edge, then I won't see it spilling over on the bevel. So I'll just close that window again. Press space to deselect, so you can see now. Just checking around the edge. It looks okay. So the top, I'll select this top edge, and I'll go three of these segments down the side. Right click, and then uh, left click on UV mapping. You can see it's there, ready. So continue projection normal. And that's the top area there, so I position that more or less in the middle. I think it's scaled disproportionately now because I just fitted it into that space, so I scale horizontal, there we go, and then scale uniform. Now when I took the photograph, uh, the antenna was on, but I uh, cropped it off. It's because I knew I wasn't going to include it. I'll include that in a different way. So I'm just trying to fit this in so these corners don't overlap the edges. You can see mostly this is uh, just just quite a, a, a fiddly process of aligning these things so that they look okay. So close that, have a little look. So at this stage, the, the problem here, what's going to arise, we'll look at this, is that because I took the photograph from different positions and the material was reflective, we might not get an alignment on the reflection there, which is uh, a bit of a tricky thing to sort out. Probably could do that in a paint package with cloning, but then I'll have to work out on the map which bits align with what bits. So if you look at this map here, this is the shiny edge there, and that's the edge that I'm going to mate it up with, but the reflections move because of the rotation of the object and the environment it was in. So here, to match these two, what I might want to do is clone the same uh, colour onto this edge between these two bits to make them match, and then I can reload the image in or edit it afterwards. So that's just a refinement, but Again, I don't want to make these things too complicated, so I'll just stick with uh, the basics at the moment. So, UV mapping, there it is there, continue, projection normal, and that's the end. So, place that over there, and then scale, uniform, so bring it down, try and position it in the middle. Something else I might want to do is brush out the uh, the dial on the side, because I'm going to add that separately. So, oops, and scale that vertically down to up there somewhere. So we see how much of a match is that's going to look and whether or not the, the dial is going to show up. So that can be a further refinement. So I'll close that now and have a look at this end. So I want the volume printed on there. You can see there, there's a slight mismatch on the reflection where these two join. <coughs> and uh, now there's just, well, just this side and the bomb. So we'll do the bomb not recovered from my cold, hence the mapping of the Beecham's powders box, I suppose. Right, so okay then, that's the bottom, right click, UV mapping, continue, projection normal, this is the bottom there, you can see I've not managed to take a very clean photographs, but uh, obviously just for the demonstrations and purposes it's not too bad, so shrink that down so that it's going to fit in the middle somewhere here, so scaling, oh, select that again, scale uniform, then scale vertical. The question came up, what does UV mapping 
uh, the UV and UV mapping stand for. Now, I think I'm right in saying that it's just a set of coordinates. So like you've got X, Y, Z for three dimensions, you've got uh, U and V for the two dimensions and just so they don't get confused to use different coordinate system. Okay, right, uh, that's the the bottom one there. Looks okay. So just this one to fill in now and then the job's done and we can look at uh, just adjusting the uh, textures to perhaps scrub off the dial there and uh, correct any seams which we'll try and do in PaintShop Pro. So after I've exported it from here, I'll just get this one sorted. Right, UV mapping, uh, continue, projection normal, and that's the side I'm looking for there. So I'll place it over there, just drag it over there. Scale, uniform, take it down, and then scale vertical. So it sort of is the right shape. I want to get that little jack socket there. Scale, uniform. Right, so will it turn out looking round is the question because there's just slight distortions on this because it's distorted to fit a square image which is the most efficient use of the um, <coughs> image available. Right, close that and let's have a look see if that looks about right. Okay, it looks a little bit light possibly and again there's the, the issues where the reflections are joining but yep, yeah, we're more or less there. So I go File, Export, Wavefront Object and call this uh, My Radio and uh, save that and then what I can do is I'll I'll preview it in Octane because that works nice and fast for previewing purposes and allow me to s look around the object and then we'll just do a bit of correction so node input object node load this in I loaded uh, the other object into Bryce and uh, DS before so I thought we'll just deal with it in this and remember to turn the smooth off so it looks okay and then we'll see what corrections we can make and, and how easy it is to do it so here we go there's that reflection there so what I need to do is I'm just going to clone that out in here so I'm going to take some black from there and just clone the reflection out there so you can't see that very easily you could clone all the way around to remove the evidence of the the dial just make sure you clone it from areas where you've got a similar material and then go file and save and then I'll just update that image which uh, I've got up to the image I'm going to not have saved it properly yet let me check I've done the right thing here yeah it's gone from there I thought I could just do that on Octane I'll update the object maybe object selected update update the image I'll just reload the image for some reason it didn't update it for me there you go it's gone so with any uh, anomalies let's try this top edge here because you can see there's a bit of a seam then it's going to be a case of go into the image work out where that is that's there and there and we'll see if we can match them up somehow so if I got a bit of an orientation issue there because that's going horizontally and that's going vertically so it's going to make it a little bit tricky but if I extend this reflection by cloning it across like this let's see if see if we can do it by updating this time so I'll just give that a quick save go into Octane and then I'll update the image as it did that time you can see that it's helped but there's still a bit of a seam there so what you want is a common color to brush across those two areas but you saw there that uh, I was in the right area with that so I'll just brush that to the edge there like so just to give you some idea oops how to do this though obviously it, I'm, I'm just trying to do it quickly so left click to where that goes and then oops uh, I need some of that color in there that's the thing and I can move it around so that's a bit lighter it's a bit lighter there so I bring some of that in then I can clone from that area and spread it around and, and should try to disguise the uh, the join there it's not it's not very easy and it's quite time consuming so I won't do all of it but you can see now I've managed to disguise some of the join there by getting the two colors to match there's still a little bit of a seam left and right so it's a case of extending that and just trying to hide the existence and um, there are other bits of software I'm trying to get to grips with that make this process easier for UV mapping but since we're trying to do everything in wings in this video that's the idea well I'm not doing it all in wings this bit obviously I'm doing this in PageUp Pro but 
without incorporating yet another piece of software other than something to preview it. So there you go. You can see now that the seam has almost vanished from that. And uh, as, as a final refinement, what I shall do is uh, finish sorting these seams out and then uh, create a, a dial on the end and the antenna to cover this edge up here. Can you see where it's it's joined? Well, I'll just put something in that place there. So there you go. That's the end of the video. I hope you uh, found that useful and not too confusing. Cheers now.